Hey guys, welcome back to Auto Repair guys. Thank you guys for watching and subscribing to the channel. In today's video guys, we will show you on a Ford Focus MK3 guys. This is the third generation from year 2012 to 2019. How to blade the cooling system, the coolant system. Stay with us guys, we will cover everything from start to finish. Now, I couldn't find any information online. I couldn't find anything in the service manuals, but we will explain guys how we do it at the shop and we've tested it. It worked uh, pretty much every time we did it, but I would definitely recommend to consult your service manual for your specific model. We'll be demonstrating on a 2.0 engine, but I think it will work on many engines because the cooling system is about the same. So stay with us. We'll cover everything from start to finish. Quick introduction. Every car we get at the shop, we make at least 200 videos. Why guys? Because our mission is to save you guys as much money as we can. So please guys subscribe to the channel and like the video, we will have more than 200 videos on Ford Focus 3rd generation as well. If you guys need to purchase any parts or tools or coolant for your car, check out the link in the description of the video below. You can save really good money and you can get them uh, with pretty fast shipping. So let's go ahead and start on the uh, bleeding the cooling system now. So let me explain what we'll be doing now guys. Okay, in order to bleed the cooling system, Ford Focus does not have a bleeder valve, at least I couldn't find on any, any of the ones that we've worked on. Uh, the Fiesta, for instance, it has a bleeder valve on the radiator. This one, I couldn't find anything, guys. So, we jack the car up on the driver's side, guys. Front, left side. Okay, you can see the tire is in the air. Okay, all the way in the air. Why? Because we want, guys, that the point of the radiator here to be the, the highest point, guys. And what we'll be doing now? Okay, the only thing that you need to do is remove the driver's side headlight. If you want to see the video, guys, it's pretty simple, it takes less than 30 seconds probably to a minute to remove the whole headlight. And once you remove the headlight, you have one little hose right here. Now it's super, okay, it's super important not to break that hose while removing it because those could be very fragile. Don't break your radiator as well, but you're going to press here in. Okay, and you will start guys pulling okay that holds out now it gets stuck because it has o-ring guys right here that gets stuck sometimes but we're going to get that one out why because that way the air is going to get out of the system okay but that's not all everything we need to do guys we have to do quite a bit so make sure you stay until the end so you guys don't overheat your car Next, we need to get some coolant. We have a premix coolant. If you guys want to buy a Motorcraft coolant, we have the link in the description of the video. Check it out, you can get it for a super good price. Now, what we'll be doing next, guys. Okay, we keep adding coolant, okay, until we see coolant coming out of that radiator. So, okay, let's do that now. Okay, so we start adding coolant, and we're going to attempt, guys, to stop Okay, once we see coolant coming out of the okay, of the radiator, let me move the cover that we have underneath here, not to get it dirty. So, okay, you can see that reservoir is getting full. You will definitely feel, guys, air coming out of here. It's taking it slowly. Check it out. We fill it up, then it just goes. We just did an engine replacement on that Ford Focus, guys. So if you want to see how to replace engine, check out the video. It will be on the channel or maybe it's even uploaded by now. So we keep adding. We keep adding until we see something happening here, guys. That means that there will be no air in the radiator because we have the car jacked up on this side. So what will happen, it's tilted that way and air always escapes at the highest point. And this is an open port now, so everything should come out. Okay, it's still. Okay, check out how it's taking, how the air is coming out. Air is coming out and it started leaking, guys. Okay, but it has some air. So what I'll do, I'll get a bucket, guys. Okay, let me get a bucket quick. We want to make sure that there is no air coming out of here. Okay, so you... Okay, don't touch it with your hands. Always use gloves, guys. But make sure that there is no air coming out. 
Okay, you can see more air. Now all that is collected in the bucket. More air coming this way. So I'll close it for a little bit again. Don't touch with your fingers. What you're striving guys to do, okay, is to have no air at all. Like no air coming out of the system. So we're going to add more coolant there. You have to have in the coolant overflow bottle. Okay, that's pretty steady guys, right there. And I'll go ahead and close it. Okay, perfect. It's closed here now. What we're going to do next, we're just going to top it to the full mark on the coolant overflow bottle. Cool. Okay, maximum mark on the, uh, when it's cold. Okay, you can see right here. Perfect. Now, we'll be guys ready for the next step. So, we'll show you what we need to do next, something very important. So after we add the coolant guys, okay, next thing guys, never ever start your car inside the garage, always take it outside. Uh, we have the doors wide open on the front and the back, so uh, we'll start the inside, but if you start the inside guys, you still can die. So always take the car outside for uh, the next procedure guys, because if you start your car, and uh, you can poison yourself with carbon monoxide. So now we're going to find the OBD port, we're going to plug our scanner here. Okay, car is cold. We haven't driven it, so I'm going to scoot the seat back. Now, what we're going to do, guys, okay, I'm going to start the car. Okay, we'll start it now. What we'll do next? Okay, let me explain quick now. I just need to close the door so it's not, well, I don't think it will actually ding at us because we started it. Now, we're going to go ahead, guys. Plug that scanner, which is very cheap scanner, and you can find it listed in the description of the video below. Okay, it's amazing scanner, guys. It will be there, but uh, what it actually does, you can see live data. You can read the engine codes, delete engine codes. So it will be very convenient for the next step, guys. Okay, we don't have any engine codes. We confirm yes. Next, we're going to select. You have two different modules. Usually, guys, okay. Uh, you have the live data for all the sensor under one of them and the other one you could see maybe like fuel pressure and something like that so Let me actually go ahead and see which one it is because it really depends on the model and the configuration Okay, I think this is the one with everything maybe so view data Complete data set we can see RPMs runtime low So Maybe the other one, okay, yep, the other one has uh, more stuff than that, but it's good. Okay, let me show you the other one, what you can see. Under this one we can still see what we need, but under the other one you can see definitely quite a bit more data. It really depends on the configuration again and all that stuff, so we're going to, ah, let me go back, click live data. Okay, and... Now, the temperature gauge, it says that the car, you can see the car is cold. And uh, usually that gauge, guys, I've, I've tested it uh, uh, 20 to 30 degrees Celsius when it reaches the minimum and it doesn't move at all up and down. It is made to where it makes you feel comfortable, guys, staying there. But usually uh, this is uh, made on purpose that way. So it's not going to, okay, it's not going to actually bother you if your car starts uh, heating up a little bit. So. With that computer now, we can actually see everything inside and we can see the coolant temperature, 39 degrees, guys, check it out. Coolant temperature. Okay, we have uh, a few more things that you can see here, all that stuff, catalytic converter temperature, but what we're striving now, we're going to select coolant temperature right here. You have to have your heater all the way on high, fan blowing, heater on high, AC off, guys. What it does now is going to circulate the engine coolant through the heater core. That way, guys, you're going to get more air out of the system that way as well. So that's what we're doing now. And uh, uh, um, as you can see, the coolant is warming up. I will idle the car probably for about 10 minutes like that so the engine oil can warm up. And what I do after that, guys, okay, uh, I will rev it up and hold it at about 2500 RPMs for about 30 seconds. Okay, like that. For about 30 seconds guys, steady. Very, very steady. Okay, check it out now. Very steady. Check it out how the coolant will start warming up. 
what it does that now guys that steady flow is going to actually pick little pockets of air that we have in the cylinder head and it will release them I light off guys so now let it idle for about 30 seconds again that procedure guys you're going to do about five times five times and what's important to make sure that you do not overheat your car if uh, celsius it goes more than 100 and i would say even five degrees maybe even over 100 shut it off guys maybe you have air in the system uh, fahrenheit okay 100 so that will be 180 about 210 about 210 215 guys so now i'm going to rev it up again at about 2500 rpms for about another 30 seconds guys okay like that and you can see how the coolant is warming up so that's great which means that most likely we don't have so much air in the system remember how we removed that hole so probably we got almost everything out of it okay perfect i think it's about 30 seconds i didn't time it this time but you get the idea guys five times do that and once you're done with that i'll explain guys okay what else you need to do again keep eye on your thermostat and your current temperature to make sure that you do not overheat even though okay check it out now the gauge says that we're in the middle so the car should be warmed up we're only at 50 40 degrees guys uh, celsius celsius right here on the uh, on the computer and uh, I, i'm telling you that thing it just stays there to make you feel comfortable what i'm going to do okay give me a second now i will get a heat gun quick guys okay this is the heat gun right here and we're going to see what kind of temperature we get out of the heater as well so i'll turn it up okay i have here everything being taken apart by the way perfect so now it's switching and let's see you should guys get pretty warm air you should definitely feel your heater while you're having the car up and okay you can definitely see guys ours started warming up quite a bit we're at about 40 degrees minimum guys 40 celsius coolant is at 56 and outside okay fahrenheit that's 107 right now outside it's about 45 so it's pretty cold guys so we'll go ahead rev it up guys now three more times rev it up for 30 seconds let off for 30 and do that and we'll continue while you're doing that guys while you're revving it up always have a person outside to make sure that uh, uh, all the coolant didn't uh, go in the engine okay you can see our decrease significantly but we're still uh, close to the minimum mark so we're fine but the next step guys uh, what i would recommend you can take it for a test drive if the coolant looks good but i would recommend the way it is warmed up and the way you turn it off let it sit for one night guys let it sit for one night and it's going to take even more coolant okay and next morning add coolant check everything make sure you don't have any leaks uh, and uh, drive the car short distance keep eye on the temperature gauge and make sure you don't you do not overheat if you start overheating repeat the procedure guys but pretty much okay that will be okay that will be guys uh, the whole procedure hopefully the video will be helpful guys thank you for watching please subscribe to the channel for more videos and see you guys next time